Ali Shakur. I am originally from Jackson, Michigan in southeastern lower Michigan. I am a married husband of two. I'm a biologist by trade, an aquatic ecologist actually. I have a bachelor's degree in biology with a minor in chemistry. A master's degree from the University of Michigan School of Natural Resources in Resource Ecology and Management. I'm currently pursuing a PhD in aquatic ecology at Wayne State University in Detroit. And I've been a tournament angler for about 10 years now, fishing the Cabela's Masters Walleye Circuit in the National Walleye Tour. Originally, I was a small inland lake fisherman. I grew up fishing Iris Hills with, with my father, may God rest his soul, you know, chasing bluegill and pike and panfish in the inland lakes. And he was an avid pan fisherman, so that's where, that's my base. I love the walleye fish. I love to chase all these different species, but bluegill are still kind of my base. So moving down to this area with the Detroit River and Lake Erie, I had to quickly become more adept at fishing big water. So I made that shift, primarily a big water fisherman now. So there's been a a 180 degree turn in how I fish and how I think about fishing now. Okay, uh, how I became a scientist and one of the smartest anglers fishing today. I don't know if I'd make that claim, but uh, again, I talked about, you know, how my father would do me as, as a child with my observational skills and the books that he would buy me. I remember having a Peterson insect guide and the bird guide, field guides and everything. And, as a six-year-old, one of my favorite books was the Encyclopedia of Astronomy, a book my father had bought me. So, you know, just reading those kind of books kind of really steered me towards, towards the sciences and kind of put me on that track. You know, I kind of got on an accelerated track in school, in, in, in elementary school, a program called LEAP and Upward Bound, you know, for, for students who wanted to go to school. So I was kind of steered towards the sciences and, and, and it took hold. And then I got in interested in the natural resource, so I was able to take that science background as a kid and transition into a scientist so I could bring all those things together. So again, I'm really concerned about what's going on in the natural world, not so much catching at the time. So that science background, I'm, I'm able to incorporate in my fishing, my pre-fishing, my fun fishing and everything. And it really makes it really, really fun for me. So how does my research benefit walleye? So, so part of my research, my dissertation work that I've done was actually with walleye. I got walleye eggs from Michigan DNR up in uh, Beta Knock, and again, working with microcystis. So I've taken a look at how harmful algal bloom exposure may impact walleye populations. So have some pretty, pretty decent data about how walleye may be impacted in early summer in those harmful algal blooms or late spring. They've kind of occurred early and earlier. So with that information, hopefully managers can take that information and and, and if there's ever a, a crash or an, or an instance where the population may start to decline, which we've seen in some areas with blooms, they can use that information to kind of help make some more informed decisions. Again, there's a lot more work that needs to be done. Nothing's ever complete with science. There's always kind of the next question that needs to be asked, but hopefully it's playing a small part in kind of, you know, putting a piece of that puzzle together to help manage in the future. Egg hatch, success, survival, larval walleye, uh, lipid content or body condition and survival. Another part of that has been exposing green frogs, which are important because, you know, green frogs start as tadpoles and they metamorphose into tadpoles. So there, there's kind of a connection between the aquatic environment and the terrestrial environment. But exposing those to microcystis and microplastics. But then the other part is even cooler, so I use some hydroacoustics. So we're going out on the NOAA boats and mapping subsurface concentrations of microcystis in Western Basin Lake Erie. At the same time we're doing that, we're mapping a fish community composition and how it's kind of uh, distributed inside and outside of the bloom. So we use a big airplane-like structure, multi-beam sonar sounder with four different uh, frequencies to, to map those things out. So that's really cool. Going to overlay that over some satellite imagery and some acoustic telemetry to get a, a real-time snapshot of how fish are, are interacting with the bloom both inside and out. So that's going to be really cool when that's finally published and put out for the public. How does my research benefit the average angler? So not just my research, but I think the research in whole. So, so what I like to do, I think the niche that I've carved out a little bit is I like to go to people who have an interest, a fishing group, the Downriver Walleye Federation, Lance Valentine's Teach and Fishing, these different, these different organizations. And I like to bring science that they may not have heard about. Usually the anglers will hear the limit's been cut to six from eight and that's it, but they don't get to hear the why. So I like to dig into those numbers and look at the catch rates and look at the, the trawl surveys and everything and take that information and give it to the anglers. So 
they have footing so that when something changes, there's uh, something's coming down the pipe that they may not agree with, they're able to take that information and question a representative or question a, a local biologist or something. So, you know, my career and, and the things that I do have benefits those anglers by giving them knowledge that, that maybe they may not have been exposed to to begin with to kind of help them in their enjoyment of the outdoors and preserving their heritage of, of enjoying the outdoors. My favorite athlete to come out of the University of Michigan, probably Tyrone Wheatley. One view to pick forever, four of you a perspective, four of you. Biggest walleye I've personal caught, 13.7 pound walleye, but I have five or six over 13. Most memorable walleye I've ever caught uh, was a big walleye on Lake Erie. Tournament time was winding down. We had to pick up to run to the launch, and as we were clearing lines, big fish hit. Um, we caught that fish and ended up doing pretty well in that tournament. Probably an 11, 12 pound fish. One lure to pick forever, yellow, gold, or black. Yellow, if we're talking chartreuse, yellow. My fishing superstition. I've been known to wear the same underwear for a couple days in a row if the fish is good in the tournament. <laughs> People gonna think that's pretty disgusting. But I, well, I'm not gonna say I wash them all the time, but yeah, that's probably it. Most common mistake walleye anglers make. Oh man, listen to the other walleye anglers. An in the lab playlist, what artist has to be on it? Bob Marley. <laughs>